Welcome to Gallifrey Pirate Radio. <laughs> and I am your host, Davey Beauchamp, and these are my two wonderful hosts for this episode where we talk about um, closing time. To the right of me, I have Angela. And to the left of me, I have Clayton. Okay, um, we we're talking about God Complex, where we have the return of probably one of the uh, a fan favorite, Craig, yeah. from uh, last season's Love Alger. And just for the mm -hmm. record, we watched both these episodes back to back. So the last episode, I got it confused on which one we were talking about. Yes. Just to clear that up. So. Is also the return of the Cybermen, and not just any Cybermen, a uh, classic Cybermen, and not the crappy Cyber Cybermen. So I was quite happy to see that. One of the best things that happened with the uh, new Big Bang. Um, you know, we got our Cybermen back. So, what did we like about this episode? Uh, it had Craig. It <laughs> had, had an awesome, awesome baby. Yes. Yes. Which you don't get to say very often about television. That is true. Uh, was one cool little kid. Yeah. Um, I like that there was <coughs> yet another chance for the doctor to use his ability to speak baby. Yes. And, um, I don't know, it just hit pretty much every note right for me. Oh, I like that they brought Craig back. I thought that was really cool showing how he was like, he was going to his death, so he was going to kind of stop on the way and like chill out with someone that wasn't Amy and Rory. But he did see Amy and Rory, so I really liked that because that was really sad to me at least. And then you kind of also saw how Amy had kind of moved on because of the whole little perfume ad. Yeah. So. Okay, um, let me get, let me get right down to it. I thought it was great, and if people want to argue about if these are Cybermen or Cyber Cybermen, the fact that they had a Cybermat proves which set of Cybermen this is, which was amazing. I was so happy to see it throw right back to classic who they are. I love that they show that there is life beyond the Doctor, where unfortunately, um, the way Davies wrote Sarah Jane, she made it seem there was no life after the Doctor until she met him again, which I totally disagree. I think Sarah would have carried on doing what she did, not waiting for the doctor the way he made her sound. But I love the fact that Moffat shows that there is life after the doctor. You know, she went on to become a model. I mean, she did stuff with her life. She wasn't there waiting for him. Though, again, she also had Rory, a very strong male. And she knew why person. he left her, too, though. I do well, think. Well, Sarah knew. Well, yeah, but it was more of he said goodbye. She was like, you... You left me. Yeah, he never said goodbye until until after that. So I mean, I, I do think yeah. that uh, Davies did try and make up for that with the death of the Doctor, when he actually does have when you know in that episode he does have the throwback, but just the reference to all of the previous companions and all of the good they've done for the world because they were changed by their experience. Oh yeah, that. that was in the Sarah Jane episode. Right. Yeah, I, I think that was. It kind of seems like it's an attempt to go away from the earlier statement about Sarah Jane. and I think it was just really cool to do that and establish that these are people who are made better through their experiences with him. Yeah, but are they? I think so. I think most of them are. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, I, I can't say that they're all, but I think, yeah, a good, a good number are. Um... Sorry. But um, I also like the fact that, you know, at this point, the Doctor is now almost 200 years older. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact that we find out where he got the envelopes from. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good tie-in. Yeah, I mean, this was a really great episode where it started, you know, bringing stuff together. Um, I also like the very end with oh, River. Yes. Um, where they're showing her actually being the archaeologist. Yeah. Um, very, very nice touches there. Um... And, yeah, I mean, I think Smith and the guy who plays Craig just play so well off of each other. Oh, they do. Um, as much as I'd love it, I'd love to see him maybe a companion, but he can't now. Because he has a baby and commitments and stuff like that. But the baby. You can't bring the baby on the TARDIS. Not, 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 not as a baby. But, yeah. Um, I, I, it was a great episode. I mean, I just... I, I love the Craig episodes. 
So, um, is there anything we didn't like about this episode? Oh, um, there is one thing that bothered me. Okay. You know those three kids? Yes. You see the doctor, and then, you know, it cuts to the voiceover yeah. that they have. You know, each of them, their one line is their experience yeah. seeing the doctor that time. I liked time. his hat. Yeah, well, <laughs> my problem with that, the one black kid who gets his one line is the only non-white character with a speaking part to not die for, like, three straight episodes. Go back and watch it. It's, it's really, really... So who okay. else counting that? So, God Complex, we get the... The, the Indian. The yeah. Indian. Indian lady. Um, who do we get in The Girl Who Waited? Oh, there, no, <laughs> the, the robots. Well, yeah, okay, the, yeah, and yeah, she's the one minority character in God Complex. Yeah. She dies after having her faith stripped away from her. Then, the two Cybermen, white guys die before then. But the, but the Cybermen, in this episode, only kill black people. <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, yeah, no. Um, yeah, because, wow. Well, maybe they see them as a superior race. Though, but then again, they were making the, the Chris the old white guy as their the leader. Superior, the superior race for parts. Wow, this is this okay. is this is this is clerk. No, this is uh, chasing email all over again. I mean, I I don't think it was intentional at all, but it's kind of unfortunate to watch and notice. Yeah, I mean, that would kind of be hard. That it, it, it that would be kind of hard to make that planned because a lot of the casting. I, I mean, they probably did cast somebody for for the Muslim part as a Muslim. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm one of the best the security guard and the shop clerk. They were just kinda like oh, yeah, we I'm need sure, I'm sure it was just incidental yeah. casting. Yeah, I still, hope it I was. Mean, you watch that and I mean if you notice it like I did, you just sort of sit there and you go, Wow, that's weird and really, really bad. That's because we're so used to just seeing white people on Doctor Who. Well yeah, that is true. <laughs> that I mean that is yeah. Um so, um, do we have anything else we want to talk about about this episode? I mean, aside from that, I really like the episode. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's, like I said, I think these three episodes, um, the last, or this one and the last two, God Complex and The Girl Who Waited, are extremely strong episodes. Yeah. Um, to what was, I hate to say, a weak beginning of this, uh, this mid-season break, or this mid-season, uh, yeah, arc. It, it didn't really start off the strongest. No. But... No. This run of episodes, I think, was where it really picked up. Yeah. I mean, there was character development in these three episodes. I mean, it really moved stuff forward. Um, they managed to get a lot done in terms of the plot of the individual episodes, but uh, with the exception of The Girl Who Waited, there's also, in each in each case, a major attempt to move the, the overall season plot forward. Yeah. Which was nice. Um, any final words about this one? I want a Cybermat mouse. BBC needs to get on that. They're cute, have little teeth on the front. That would be awesome. That little tail can move. That would be terrifying. <laughs> be awesome. It would be. I have a twisted sick sense of cuteness though. Really? Yeah. I never would have guessed. What? I'm gonna dress your cat up like a doll. It would be awesome. You are not just seeing my cats up. Um, I really have not, mu not not much to say because I'm everything's building to the season finale here. Yeah, it is. Oh, and of course, you know we did learn who was in the spacesuit. Mm -hmm. um, some people caught it. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I had my money on Rory. I was a little disappointed. Um, I had it on River. I knew it. Well, I mean, we. I mean, it was leading up to the doctor's death, and they were hinting that it was her the entire time. Yes, but I also have the well, no, other piece of that thought out too. By they then. didn't really yeah. hint that it was. I mean, I thought that it was more. Well, I mean, they were always saying that, that she was going to kill a good man. Yeah, I she mean, was that, the best. No, man. I mean, by they had dropped so many heavy-handed hits hints to that point that it didn't even seem like hinting so much as outright saying, "This is the person we want you to believe is in the space suit." Oh, look! It's the person we told you it was all along. Yeah. See, I thought it was 
earlier on I saw the spacesuit and I went, oh, silence in the library. And then I was like, no, that's a different spacesuit. I yeah. Things river. <laughs> yeah. So. Though, yeah, I mean, and that and, and that's an interesting character just in itself, especially with, with, with this, what happens with the season finale, is we're running out of possible episodes with River now. Yeah. Because with the two timelines going wait, opposite wait, directions. Wait, really a next episode. It is, discussion. but I mean, yeah. But I just, I wanted to bring that up a little. Um, but yeah, um, so until next time, uh, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off. Where we're going to talk about the, uh, the uh, River's Wedding. Uh, peace. <laughs>